Hey guys, so as you all know that NABARD Development Assistant notification has been out. So those who were waiting eagerly for the notification, this is a very good news for them. So uh, all the best for you guys. And let me tell you that the current affairs which we are providing here are not only important for RBI, SEBI and NABARD grade A and grade B but they are equivalently important for NABARD development examination also. So do not uh, miss out on the current affairs through this morning tail series and for the uh, previous month's current affairs you can download the spotlight magazine which is the monthly compilation of all the current affairs. So you can download the spotlight from the link which is given below in the description box. Now without wasting any time let's begin our morning tales for today that is September 11, 2019. So friends I have mentioned here two important programs here and these are going to be very interesting. So let us discuss them one by one. So today PM Narendra Modi is going to visit Uttar Pradesh and there he will be launching two new programs. First program is National Animal Disease Control Program and second program is National Artificial Insemination Program. Now what are these programs and what is India's agenda behind launching this program? So first let us talk about this. So National Animal Disease Control Program as the name itself is suggesting it is aiming to fight two diseases food and mouth diseases and second is brucellosis so these are the two diseases which this program aims to control by the year 2025 and completely eliminate by the year 2030 so as we all know that if these two diseases are substantially controlled then it would help the farmers in order to increase their incomes. So basically this program is in line with Narendra Modi's agenda to double the farmers income by 2022. So under this program uh, the central government will provide around rupees 12,652 crores and this program will will be a central sector scheme. Now what is the central sector scheme? Central sector scheme is a scheme in which the central government provides the 100% funding. So this will be completely funded by the central government and this is the budgeted or the planned budget of the government for 5 years. So till 2024 the government aims to provide this much of amount for this scheme. and vaccinate around 500 million cattle cattle or livestock livestock also include bovine bovine that is buffalo sheep goats and pigs so that was only about this first program now let me move on to the next program so what does this next program aim to do so national artificial insemination program let us first discover what does this insemination mean. So insemination is a process uh, through which a male's sperms are transferred into the female's body through sexual or asexual methods. So this national artificial insemination program obviously aims to tackle the problem of population of the animals. Now do remember these have not been launched yet they are going to be launched today itself and now do keep this thing in your mind that this is very important from NABARD exam point of view. Now guys I have one information also that we provide the comprehensive courses for NABARD development assistant also on our website and the link of our website is provided in the description box below. So we have a 30% early bird discount for the aspirants of NABARD development assistant examination. So do avail this early bird discount and get yourself en enrolled in the comprehensive course. And now let's move on to our first question which is which city is the most preferred city for co-living? In India, according to the Knight Friends Insights on Co-Living and Asia-Pacific Perspective. This is the name of the report which has been released by Knight Frank. Now it is clear from the index itself that it is Mumbai, which is India's topmost preferred city for co-living. Next, 
Indian city which has a mention in this index is New Delhi which is at 11th rank and then we have Bangalore which is at 19th rank. Now which city is at the top of this index so it is Beijing which is in China followed by Tokyo which is in Japan. Now let us focus our attention on the parameters of this index. So this index measures 20 cities. So that is the number of overall cities on the basis of six parameters. And what are those six parameters? First is technology and financial hub. Second parameter which this index considers is the venture capital deals and growth. Third parameter is house affordability. Now fourth is university population. Fifth is general population and human development index or what is the quality of life in the city are all the parameters which have been measured in this index. So friends, now it's time to move on to our second question and this is a very important question from exam point of view. So recently SRS based abridged life tables. This is a report released by Registrar General and Census Commissioner of India. Now this Registrar General and Census Commissioner of India works under the Ministry of Home Affairs and it has released this new report. SRS stands for Sample Registration Survey and this Sample Registration Survey assesses the population growth as well as the life expectancy rate in our country. So according to this new report the average life expectancy in India is 69 years as it is shown in this picture also. So during the year 2013 to 2017 the average life expectancy was 69 years and the previous data that is the data of 2012 to 16 mentions the average life expectancy rate at 68.7 years. So this was the previous life expectancy rate which has increased to 69. Now this is important. Now we have a little more information also. So the first information is that Kerala has an average expectancy rate of 75.2 years and therefore it is the top state in this index or in this report. Now Uttar Pradesh has an average life expectancy rate 65 years and this is the lowest expectancy rate a state in India has. So Uttar Pradesh is at the lowest position. Now the second information is that the total expectancy years is 69 and in this 69 the males or the average life expectancy rate of males is 67.8 years and for females it is 70 4 years. Now this is the overall life expectancy rate. In urban area the average life expectancy rate is 72.4 for the overall population. For males it is 71.2 and for females it is 73.7. Now when we consider the rural area data so the average life expectancy in rural area is 67.7 years for males it is 66.4 and for females it is 69 years and now it's time to move on to the third question of today which is quite financial so the third question is that committee on development of housing finance securitization market recommended to set up an intermediary under NHB. NHB stands for National Housing Bank. What will be NHB's stake in it? So first of all, it is clear from this statement that the new intermediary which will be set up would be under the ages of National Housing Bank. Now the question asks you the stake of NHB. So NHB will hold 51% stake in this new intermediary which has been proposed by this committee. So do remember this thing that the intermediary has not been set up yet. It is just the recommendation. Now we will be discussing a lot of information here one by one. So first of all, let me tell you the head of this securitization market committee. So the committee is headed by Harsh Vardhan. Now this intermediary will have 
NHB as its owner and RBI as its regulator. So RBI would be regulating this intermediary and NHB would be handling the administrative operations of this intermediary. The intermediary will start its operation with 500 crore fund and the committee has recommended the government to dilute its stake from 51% to 26% over the period of 5 years. Now friends you must be wondering about the word government which I used just now. So let me tell you that NHB is under the ages of government only and in the recent months NABAD and NHB had been transferred to the government by RBI. Now a very basic question might be coming up in your mind that what is the purpose behind setting up this intermediary. So the purpose behind setting up this intermediary is to increase the tradability of mortgage securities and to give a boost to, to the securitization market. Now what is the meaning of securitization? So securitization is a mechanism or a process through which a lender converts its illiquid loans to tradable securities. Now apart from this intermediary recommendation, the committee has also recommended some other measures. So what are the other measures? One measure is to relax the norms on the minimum holding period and minimum retention requirement for mortgage backed securities minimum holding period the period for which you are required to hold a security or the minimum retention period both are the same things so uh, the committee has recommended to relax these norms in order to promote or to give a boost to the securitization market uh, the committee has recommended to amend or clarify the procedures for registration and stamp duty registration as well as the committee has recommended to relax the tax guidelines to reduce the transaction cost. So this is quite interesting that uh, this cricketer. So if you are a cricket lover, then you have already guessed the answer to this question that which uh, bowler or which cricketer has become the world's first bowler to score five international hat tricks. So it is clearly Lasith Malinga. Now he has also made another record so he has become the first men cricketer to score 100 wickets in t20 international format so this is another record created by him now friends there is a question which i have for you so there is one woman who has created the world record by scoring 1000 runs and 100 wickets in T20I format and she became the first uh, cricketer of either gender to score this much runs and take this much wickets. So can you name the personality? So this is my question for you guys and we have already discussed this question when she achieved this fiat. So do not forget to mention your answer in the comment section below. Now my next question is what is the new target set by India for land restoration by 2030? during COP14 of UNCCD. So let me first tell you the full form of these. So UNCCD as the picture is indicating is the short form of United Nations Convention to combat desertification. Now I am putting forth a question for you guys that you have to tell me when is World Day to combat desertification is observed. So that is my first question for you from this news. Now this COP14 that is conference of parties and this is the 14th edition of this conference of parties which is being held in India. India has set a target. So this land restoration target of 26 million hectare has been increased from the previous target of 21 million hectare to restore this much of land by the year 2030. Now there are other two important developments which have have taken place during this conference of parties. So first is that, that researchers have mentioned that three species, Indian cheetah, pink headed duck and the great Indian bustard. So these are the three species which have become extinct because of desertification. Now India and the countries which are participating in this conference have decided to work on the New Delhi Declaration. Now what is this New Delhi Declaration? It is a declaration which will be released soon 
to combat the desertification so that was all about this information but do not forget to mention your answers in the comment section below now my next question is which country has recently provided dollar 1 million assistance to hurricane hit bahamas so let me first tell you where this bahamas is so this is mexico which is in us here is florida and this is the island of bahamas so it is under the uh, caribbean islands and here it the nation of bahamas is now this bahamas has been hit by hurricane dorian so do remember the name of this hurricane because it can be asked in the examination and this has hit the uh, island nation very badly now which country has given the assistance to bahamas so it is india which has taken up this initiative to help this country now the next question is quite important so do listen to it very carefully which bank has become the india's single largest platform providing interoperable banking services to the customers of any bank through Aadhaar enabled payment services. Recently, this India Post Payments Bank has become India's single largest bank or single largest platform which will provide the banking services to the customers of any bank through Aadhaar enabled payment services. So basically, India Post Payment Bank has launched the Aadhaar enabled payment services to provide banking services smoothly to the last mile rural and inaccessible customers. Now, so let me first tell you the background of this bank. So in the year 2018, this India Post Payments Bank was created in order to provide the banking services to the remotest areas of rural India through the post office network. Since this bank has adopted the Aadhaar enabled payment services method, so it will become easier for the villagers or for the people who are living in the remotest areas to access the banking services by showing their Aadhaar card or through their fingerprint at their doorsteps. So friends, this is my question for committees. So as I had told you in yesterday's video also that I would be taking up one question for committees regularly. So this is my uh, question for you guys. So who heads the committee set up by union government to review the implementation of Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act 2003? So this was an important act which was implemented in the year 2003 and why was it implemented? So as we all know that during this period the fiscal deficit of the Indian government had reached to an all level high. So that in order to tackle the rising fiscal deficit, this Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act was enacted in the year 2003 and the union government had set up this committee to review the implementation of FRBM Act in the year 2016. So now who heads this committee? So the answer to this question is option D, N.K. Singh. Now let's move on to the last question of the day. So this is the static question. Who is the president of World Medical Association? First of all, what is this World Medical Association? It is an association of the national health federations of various nations. Now, what is the purpose behind putting up this question here? So recently, the head or the president of this World Medical Association, Leonid Edelman, has written a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and he stated his concern for the rising attacks on the doctors in India. Now, I have one static question for you guys also. So, you have to tell me that where is the headquarters of this World Medical Association. Now, friends, it's time to conclude our morning tales for today. But if you have gained anything from the video, so do not forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for all the latest notifications like the Nabar Development Assistant Examination. So friends, I'm again reminding you that those who are aspiring for this examination can enroll themselves in the comprehensive courses provided by us and the links are provided in the description box below. Thank you so much.